Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Um, I literally just woke up. So <laughs> <laughs> where are you living? Uh, I live in Vancouver. Oh, dang. There's no time difference there though. Is it? No, you're in, you're in Cali, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm California. Yeah. Yeah. I know. No, there's no time difference. We're on the same, uh, coast. Nice. Pacific, I like it. Time. I like the late wake up. Do you stay up super late? Yeah. Well, I, I work until like six, right? Like uh, six in the morning. So then by the time I wake up, it's, I'm just like, it's like two or like one. Dang. Yeah. That's freaking brutal. It's been like that for six years. You have your entire like day night cycle flipped. Yeah. They're pretty messed up. <laughs> Dang man. That's, so, that's nuts. Yeah. It's like hard for me to take morning stuff. Otherwise, um, yeah, it just kind of messes things up for like the work work shift kind of thing yeah i just think more clearly at night huh interesting yeah yeah i'm the, I'm the total opposite i could not do that at night i get in like gibberish mode and just everything starts sounding dumb well you have all those shoots in the morning right you gotta wake up early in the morning yeah i'd say most of the time our shoots like average call time is usually like 5 30 5 42 yeah and then every once in a while we'll get night shoots and your call time will be like 4 p.m. And you'll go 4 p.m. to like 6 a.m. And that sucks. That's the absolute worst. See, I'd be thriving on that. <laughs> You'd be like, all right, bring on the night shoes. I'd be like, yeah, let's go. 5 a.m.? <laughs> oh, I haven't slept yet. <laughs> um, Yo, dude, anyways, thanks for taking the time to chat with me, man. I wanted to talk to you for a while. And then, you know, Donnie commented. And I'm like, no way. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me. He was like, dude, uh. This guy I really like. He interviewed some of the writers on your show. Like you should yeah. do an interview with them. I'm like, yeah, that sounds sick. <laughs> yeah, I've talked with a bunch of the OGs, like from Karate Kid. Um, but yeah, never talked with any of the main guys like you and stuff. So this is pretty dope. Thank you, man. Oh, by the way, cool. my name's Nia. Nia. Good yeah, to Nia. John Jacob. Yeah, I figured. I'm glad I get to be the first kind of younger cast member you get to interview. Uh, I've I've sort of so we did a, I did a charity thing on on my Cobra Kai channel and uh, like Yuji showed up, all the OG Cobras showed up. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Like we raised over, I think it was like five grand or something, which was nice. For Dang. Jude's. Yeah. And uh, Nate showed up and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, and that was, and Bert, Bert and um, no way. Yeah. So that was, that was cool. But um, anyways, man, I'm stoked to have you here. So I want to ask you a bunch of questions. How much time do you have? Like, uh, I'm probably good for like 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. All right, yeah. cool. Um, we'll see where the combo goes. So first of all, I want to shout out your uh, your podcast that you got with Sholo. Oh, uh, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, so do you want to talk about that for a sec? Yeah, so uh, me and Sholo, uh, we've been best friends for a little while now. We kind of really hit it off around season one, season two of Cobra Kai. And uh, we really want to start a podcast. And at the beginning, it was called Shooting the Shit. And then uh, we found out that it was kind of hard to get sponsors with a – curse word in the name of the <laughs> podcast yeah. you know coca-cola is having a hard time aligning yeah, yeah, yeah. themselves with you know shooting the shit yeah. uh so we changed it to lone lobos which means you know lone wolves um but yeah it's a, sort of like a pop culture podcast we talk about a little bit of everything and nothing at the same time and we have a reddit um he oh, cool. always says the reddit url link so i actually don't know <laughs> what the link for the reddit is but you should check it out the lone oh, Wolves reddit i'll find it and then when i upload this i'll pop it up Underneath. oh nice that's perfect yeah, yeah and then so i'll put it i'll put it in the description where can you find URL. the podcast uh the podcast is everywhere it's on the uh, iheart radio app uh we're sponsored through iheart but it's also on spotify and apple Podcasts and all that stuff uh, but yeah we always check the reddit and uh, look for questions down there and you know different stories people put so we're always interacting with people down there so if you guys want to come and hang out and listen to us do kind of our silly banter uh come check it out right on cool yeah. Uh, do you get a lot of questions about Cobra Kai, obviously, or? Uh, it's probably like 50-50. Like Half stuff? of it is like, or it's split up and I'd say a couple sections. Some of it's like Cobra Kai related. Another part of it is people asking Blue Beetle questions for Sholo. And then yeah. the other half is like, oh my gosh, like, you're so cool. Are you taking dating applications? Oh, oh my goodness. They're, just, they're, they're funny, though. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Well, when I did that video that I'm going to be talking with you, it was like, 90 percent 80 percent of the questions were like is this mohawk coming back what's this, what's this mohawk gonna be is it green now is it? but yeah i mean is it coming back is it ever gonna return okay does hawk want it to return um 
I would. This is actually what I. This is what I would say. I think Hawkins doesn't need it anymore. Cool. That's what I would say. I'd say at this point he doesn't need it anymore. But it's a really cool hairstyle. I, I think yeah. it's kind of like it's really up in the air. When we first started filming season five, that was definitely the feel that I got from the writers as well. Yeah. I walked in and they were like, "Hey, do you think you get the mohawk back?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't think he needs it. Like, I don't really know." They were like, "Yeah, we'll fill it out." And I was like, "Okay, yeah. cool." It was it was a very chill approach to the whole hair discussion, but yeah, that's dope. That, that is always a very serious discussion. Like at the start of the year, is like, "Okay, so your hair is going to be magenta this year, and then it's going to be the <laughs> chartreuse, and then that is this sort of meaning and this symbolism and yada yada yada." Did you know? So when you got the role. I'll, I'll, these questions are going to be scattered, but uh, no, yeah. when you when you got the role, did you know that Eli was going to have this metamorphosis and flip the script? Or So, no. When I first went out for Cobra Kai, I auditioned for Dimitri. And oh, shit, it was okay. called, uh, the character's called Tanzit at the time. So I auditioned for that, and then I got a callback, did the callback, and they were like, oh, yeah, you did great, but not good enough. Uh, would you like to audition for this role, Eli? <laughs> And Eli, in the script at that point, had, like, two lines, you know, didn't talk, was, like, this shy little nerdy kid. And I was like, yeah. oh, man, this, like, they give me a pity role, you yeah. know. But I was like, hey, this is a really cool show, and I would be stoked to be on it. So, yeah, I'm going to go out for it. And then in the audition room uh, was John Hurwitz, and I started reading the lines, and he was like, oh, you have the wrong script. And he gave me Hawk signs. And I was like, what the heck? This is a completely different character. And I didn't yeah. know, I didn't think it was the same kid. I thought I had just gotten like the wrong character. Right. Um, and then when I booked it, I learned it was the same person. And then I also found out that I was going to have to get a mohawk and dye my hair blue. I was like, what the heck? Like, this is not at all what I thought I was going out for. <laughs> you know, but my dad was like, dude, you're getting a mohawk for your job. I wish I could have a mohawk for my job. You you got to do this. This is so cool. Yeah, that's probably yeah. like the coolest transformation you could have. I mean, I linked it to essentially Anakin and Vader. So it's like Hawk was like Vader. And then uh, Eli was like kind of like a young Anakin who got bullied. Yeah, I like that. I like that comparison. That's cool. Marty yeah. and Martin Kobe who plays Kreese would definitely agree with that comparison. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like working with them? Like do you have any cool stories or – they're pretty freaking cool. I remember I was really intimidated when I first met Billy, um, yeah. who plays Johnny Lawrence. Uh, yeah. He is the coolest guy ever. You know, he's not li like his character in a lot of ways. He's way nicer than, than Johnny Lawrence. <laughs> he is now like out of touch with the world. Yeah. But he like that cool factor. He really does have that sort of just like cool guy. Like I don't know. There's just something yeah. about him. He's not stoic, but. He just has that air of mystery, you know, but he is a real karate master. That guy could actually beat the crap out of you. I remember when we were first filming uh, some of the scenes where we're all in the dojo and we're all um, standing in our fighting stances and stuff. He was actually walking around critiquing all the background kids and um, showing them how to like show a jab cross. And oh, nice. uh, it was cool to see him like in actual sensei mode. Yeah. Um, that was really cool. And then. You know, Ralph is a great guy. I didn't really get to film with him at all until season four. Yeah. And um, he was he was really fun. He would love to give me shit for – I love eating Uncrustables on set. It's just like a really fast, easy snack. Yeah. And he's always like, man, those things are disgusting. How do you eat those? Dear <laughs> God. And then at the end of the season, I got him to eat an Uncrustable with me. And the yeah. whole time, he was like, it's good. It's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not bad. And so <laughs> that was pretty fun. That's my – you know, me and Ralph Macchio, we love to enjoy Crustables together. So since that was your first time kind of working with him, what made Hawk come back to Miyagi-Do instead of going to Eagle Fang? Was it just Dimitri? Yeah, I think I think all of it is Dimitri. Um, yeah. And I think that is sort of the pivot point for Eli's character is sort of like how he's doing mentally. really yeah. depends on how – you know, close he is to people that care about him. Because let's be real, his mom and dad, I don't know where his dad is. I don't know what his mom's doing. You know, I it think, you know, seems Dimitri, like yeah, everyone in this show, different. like there's like one parent always missing from like, yeah, like, no like one, Johnny's dad, like the, where's Tori's dad? Like, yeah, like, Tori's dad, yeah, Tori's dad is MIA. We have no idea where he is. We don't know yeah. if Dimitri even has parents, you know. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, Dimitri's like the rock. Uh, for Hawk, he's really someone that keeps him, yeah. you know, centered and, um, I, like, I guess when we first started filming the show, 
And all I knew about Eli was that he'd just been tormented and bullied for years, but he had this one friend that was always with him through everything. Yeah. And I think the fact that Eli even showed up at Cobra Kai at the first day when Dimitri wanted to go just shows like how um, loyal he is to Dimitri. And even though he kind of got brainwashed by Kreese and all that stuff happened and you know, there were some breaking of arms and all those things. I think those two, like the binary brother relationship, that's, that's forever, you know? And yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think their relationship is the, like the most important thing, I guess now in Eli's life for sure. Yeah. Well, your character is my favorite character in all of Cobra Kai. Oh, thanks uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. It, well, I just find Hawk to be the most relatable. I mean, like so many of us have been bullied and stuff when we were kids and you do such a great job acting that it just makes it so believable and you can kind of like see yourself in this person and his character arc is i think the most interesting because he's always like so different like he's yeah. good and then he's like this badass guy and then he's <laughs> kind of good again and then yeah and then now i'm like wondering you know what's going to happen with him he's like is he going back with the moon you know like what's his character arc going to be is he going to get the mohawk back like what's <laughs> going on <laughs> so well, no, i mean you know hawk just won the l valley i think he's yeah. you know feeling really confident you know yeah. that's definitely a huge confidence boost i think winning the all valley in Reseda is like winning the super bowl right um but i think that being said he's got now he's got a lot of eyes on him a lot of kids look up to him so he's sort of in a position that he's never been in before um yeah it's a, season five is cool I, i'm excited for everyone to see season five we are we've already filmed it yeah, so yeah, I know done. everything that happens, so I have to be very careful with all um, my spoilers. <laughs> Are you starting season six anytime soon? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, um, yeah. season five, I feel like, as every season does, I feel like... Jacob, show's it. done. Yeah, we're not doing it anymore. Yet. Yeah, they're like, yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> uh, I feel like every season leaves off on a decent cliffhanger. I would be kind of bummed Has to not to. know what yeah. happens after season five. Um, yeah. Um, I think it'll be a season six. Yeah, man. I, I don't see it ending anytime soon, hopefully. Um, when, so you said his confidence is back, but what do you think is going to happen? And I don't know how much of this you could even say, but speculating wise, what do you think is going to happen when he finds out that Robbie kind of wasn't at his all in that moment where he like hesitated? I mean, was there anything in the script about that? Where he yeah, hesitated? there actually was. That's oh, a cool. great catch on your point. Um, there was a, how it read in the script is. Um, when I jump up on him and do that flying triangle and he spins yeah. me around, slams me on the ground and he goes to punch me and he's looking at Kenny. Yeah. Um, in the script, it was like, you know, Robbie sees an opening in Hawk's defenses. He's going to punch him. And as he does, he catches, you know, he catches Kenny's eyes just yeah. looking filled with rage and anger, like cheering him on. And, uh, I wish I, I wish I could pull up right now, but, uh, like he's so angry, like so, just so invigorated in this fight, like wanting Robbie to just kill Hawk, yeah. and that causes him to pause. He's like, "Oh dang! Like, what have I sort of created? What have I done?" Basically, yeah. Um, and I think this is this fight happens after he beats up Larusso, right? Anthony Larusso. Um, I forget the order. Of I think so. Yeah, where he beats him up in the locker room. Yeah, I think this happens after that. Uh, yeah, I, I forget, but... I can't remember. Yeah, th that's a big emphasis. I, I know in the Robbie storyline yeah. of um, taking Kenny under his wing and then it not paying out at all as he wanted. Yeah. Um, and that was definitely a moment where it was like, oh, Robbie could have won but had all these, you know, things on his mind and all this, right. this huge weight on his shoulders and, you know, wasn't able to get the job done. But I don't know. I think... You don't think, think it'll affect bigger, him? What'd you say? You don't think it'll affect him when he finds out? I think a bigger thing in his mind is, you know, that he didn't really fight Miguel. Yeah. At least for me, like when I, like I think winning the tournament and knowing that Miguel is the um, actual, like he was the last All-Valley champion, not right. actually fighting him. And I think that fight would have been way closer. And even as, as you watch it, like you see Miguel is like doing really well in the fight. He's when we were working the choreography, I mean, he's driving that first portion of the fight pretty much the whole time. Um, as far as it goes for like Hawk versus Robbie, I think Hawk takes Robbie any day, any time. I think yeah. any, maybe nine, there's one time out of 10, I think Robbie wins that fight, but yeah. nine times out of 10, Hawk wins every time. I like the you way know, it ended, man. It made sense. It did. It totally made yeah. sense. I think, uh, 
the Miguel uh, Hawk, I think that's a little more nuanced. I think that's 50-50. It could go either way. Um, but there is, there is some sort of talks like that or feelings like that, I'd say, in Hawk moving forward, you know, not knowing... Um, like if being he's confident, worthy, but, kind of you know, thing. he yeah. didn't, he didn't fight Miguel. And that's something that I thought when I won, I was like, oh, dang, like, I didn't fight Miguel, you know? Yeah. Cause he did the back thing. Yeah. Yeah. Miguel, I, well, he's got a week back, so I don't know how much fighting he's going to be doing <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah. Well, now he's going to South America and I think that's going to be really interesting going forwards. Um, yeah. That arc is really cool. I bet, dude. I mean, yeah. I, yeah there's, I mean, I could speculate with you, but there's, you're only going to be able to be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like. Cool. It's, uh, it's cool. No, yeah, that that's going to be pretty sick. I'm excited for people to see that. So, what was the audition process like? Like, where was there a lot of competition for uh, playing Eli or playing Hawk, or you know, was it just kind of right away? I don't really know. Um, when I first auditioned for uh, the Dimitri role, there was a ton mm -hmm. of people there, um, and I know a lot of people auditioned for that role. Um, so, congrats to Gianni for you know booking yeah. that. Um, but. Yeah, like when I walked into the audition room, like I knew a ton of the people there. Um, and then when I auditioned for, because um, I got a callback for the um, Tanzit Dimitri role. Um, yeah. And then I want to say maybe a couple weeks later, I got the call that they wanted me to audition for Eli. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was there, I didn't know. I thought it was just the first audition. This was the producer session. Usually you have a producer session at the very end of the audition process. So right. it was like I came in very late to this um, Eli Hawk audition process. Right. And I did one audition and ended up booking it. I got a call three hours after the, after the audition saying that I booked it. And that was oh, maybe no. on a Friday I auditioned. Yeah. And then that Monday, I was flying out to Atlanta, getting my fitting done and filming on that Tuesday. So Damn. it happened super, super quick. They were really, really under the gun um, when they were yeah. looking for the Eli Hawk character. And I don't know what made them think to you know, because I auditioned for Dimitri. I don't know what made them yeah. think in my Dimitri audition that, you know, hey, this kid should try out for Hawk. But, I mean, it worked. Like, I love the character. I think I am a great fit for the character. And Yeah. Um, yeah, and it happened the role, dude. really, really fast. I remember uh, Sholo, who plays Miguel, when he first uh, – he said like they were first talking about, you know, who they're going to cast for Hawk because they yeah. all knew what the character was. Like, yeah, we're thinking about, you know, casting this kid from Disney. who was on Kirby buckets and she was like, what Disney? <laughs> oh my God. I was like, so bummed that I was a kid coming from Disney. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you and Peyton, uh, played in that movie together. Uh, the switch up. Yeah. Yeah. The swap. I remember the same thing. I was like, oh bro, you got another Disney kid coming on the show. Uh Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So did you guys know that you guys were going to both be on the same show or was she like randomly just showed up on set one day? So she, um, she comes in in season two and I remember early, early in season two, she texted me and was yeah. like, Oh my gosh, like so random. I just auditioned for Cobra Kai and I was like, Oh wow, that's so crazy. Cool. And then I want to say maybe a couple days later, um, the big three, uh, John, Josh and Hayden, they came up to me while we were filming and they're like, Hey, um, you worked with Peyton List. Mm -hmm. What is she like? And I was like, well, she sucks. She's atrocious to work with. <laughs> she's the worst. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I was joking. I was like, no, yeah. she's very professional. She's yeah. not a diva, which is a hard thing to find in this industry, I would say. Um, and she's like, she's got a really good work ethic. And uh, they're like, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. We're thinking about um, casting her for Tori. That's another role that they looked for a very long time to find the Tori role. And they just like, we're having a really hard time um, just finding the person yeah. to play that character. And I think Peyton does an amazing job in that role. Oh, she kills um, it. Cause it's very different from anything she's ever done before. I think she absolutely kills it. Um, there's tons of, of range in that character. Yeah. There's, I was gonna say like, I think they give, especially in season five. And I mean, even, even in season four, um, her character has a really cool storyline. Even in season five, her character has a really, really cool storyline that I think people are going to really love. Um, yeah, so. it was, yeah. so I didn't know that she was going to be on the same, sh on the same show. And then, you know, the first day working there, I was like, Oh God, you again, like, this is horrible. <laughs> well, that was, that's good that you got to see her. Yeah. She has a pretty sweet arc. I mean, like, well, we haven't even seen it yet, but I, I want to find out. There's so many fan theories, dude, on like who her mom is, and they're like, "Is it Hillary Swank's character from Crazy <laughs> Four? Is it like?" I like, I like <laughs> the Hillary Swank one. 
Yeah, Dude, I, I wish I want to meet Hillary Swank. Oh my god, that'd be so cool. That'd be cool. When you were talking about Dimitri, I was thinking about something which like I always like relate things to Star Wars. Do you like Star Wars? By the way? Yeah, I love Star Wars. Dude, who a segue? Who came up with that line? The What's Anakin Obi Wan high ground line. Oh, um, okay. So <laughs> this is kind of funny. Donnie, anytime we're like out hanging out, and it's really late at night. Him and my friend Caden will start just reenacting that whole scene. Dope. And so I'd said that line as a joke like a couple times to Gianni, yeah. and then Josh uh, healed one of our creators, was right. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we're going to write that in." And I was like, "Oh, cool, that's funny." That's epic. And the Star Wars is like a thing in the in the Karate Kid world. Yeah. No. Yeah, I know it is yeah. kind of cool that it kind of comes full circle. So there. what I was thinking was Dimitri, because like Dimitri basically, I don't, I don't if there was no Dimitri, probably Hawk wouldn't come back. I feel like. No. I feel like there's, and. I think he is kind of like the uh, almost uh, I can't say the Obi Wan, but maybe like the the Luke to to Vader. Oh, interesting. Because like Luke brought Vader back, Luke, yeah. Luke brought Anakin back. So I kind of feel like I don't know. I always like connect these different things. And then like when Robbie was looking at Kenny, uh, it was kind of like when Luke was looking at his mechanical hand when he chopped off his dad's hand, and he's like, "Oh my God, this is what I'm becoming." Like. Anyways, thanks. That's, that's, that's cool. That's, that's my brain. I like dude. that. <laughs> well, yeah, I always do those like parallels. I'm like, damn, what? Like, are they t t taking so many like perfect things from Star Wars? This is dope. Yeah. Um, dude, Star Wars is, I mean, there's so many, even in like Aragon, like that was a huge book series that I loved. And I was yeah. like, so much off of it, so much off. But it's very inspired by Star Wars. Like, a lot of the themes that happen in Star Wars is just great storytelling. And I mean, I'm sure Star Wars got it from somewhere else that it's a reference that I don't Yeah, they all about. rip off each other, man. Yeah, you know, but it's cool to see like how different stories can be reinvented and reimagined, you know? Like the Hawk character is very different than Anakin, but the themes, a lot of the themes are the same and that character growth is very yeah. similar. Like Dr. Jacqueline, Mr. Hyde kind of thing. He just, exactly, like, yeah. he just like switches back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um Kate, when you fought Robbie, he showed respect. Is there anything yeah. is there anything in the in the script about that? Like why did he do that? Why did he have this like switch? Um Yeah, so I think uh, halfway through that fight, we're fighting each other, and we're like, "Damn, like we are going toe to toe. Like this is this is yeah. legit." And you know, I I kind of bow first, and I think um, going over to Miyagi Do, I think Eli learned a lot of different lessons in mm -hmm. you know forgiveness, and you know, even when I walk up to go fight Robbie, I'm like, "All right, like sick. This is time to get payback." And he's like, "Hey, yeah. you know, like fight your own game." Like this fight isn't about that. This is about you and what you're fighting for, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, Hawk obviously grows a lot over the Miyagi Do tutelage. It's yeah. sort of like the good side in our you know Karate Kid universe. Yeah. Um, and you know, Robbie was on that side too, so he knows he knows all of the lessons and stuff. But he's a little bit corrupted right now by Cobra Kai and Silver, and Crease has got his fangs in him. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what it says about him showing respect. I think it's just because we're both fighting really, really well. And, you know, I have the, I guess, like, being able to, like, put my ego aside and bow to him and show respect. And I think he kind of does the same minorly, yeah. reluctantly. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that was a really cool moment. I remember when we were filming that, there was, you know, 300-something extras out there. and Which is wild. It's yeah, it was audience. it was pretty it was pretty cool feeling. Not gonna lie, they're all like cheering, screaming, and going crazy, and you know, like kind of looking at the crowd and then looking at Tanner and then bowing. It was it was a cool moment. Yeah. Um, how did you get into acting? I mean, can I ask you stuff beyond yeah. Cobra Guy? Like, just oh yeah, how about you. Um, yeah. I got into acting when I was five. Cool. Um, my sister really wanted to be an actress. And she kept bugging my mom about it, bugging my mom about it. So my mom sent a bunch of Christmas cards to a bunch of different agents in LA. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them got back to us. And one of them was like, hey, we want to take on McKenna, Jacob, and Blake. You know, my mm -hmm. older sister and my younger brother. Yeah. And we all did a ton of commercials when we were younger. And, you know, my sister ended up hating it. My brother uh, became a collegiate runner and not really liking it anymore. And yeah. it kind of stuck with me. And I just did a bunch of commercials and then did a bunch of little guest star spots. Um, I got to, I'd say like the three biggest guest star spots that really let me, I feel like each time I had to like move up, you know, to right. commercials, to guest star spots. And then, 
you know, I did Parks and Rec, the community, and iCarly. And then once I did that, yeah. those three, my agent was like, okay, we'll start sending you out for, you know, a series regular on like a TV show. Um, so then I was on Nickelodeon for a little bit, um, did a show with them called Marvin Marvin, and then yeah. did a movie with them. And then my contract with Nickelodeon ran up, and then I signed with Disney, and I did a show called Kirby Buckets with them, and yeah. then I did a movie called The Swap with uh, Peyton List, who plays Tori, Tori Nichols. Um, yeah, and then I want to say my end of my junior year of high school, I booked uh, Cobra Kai and started filming it at the beginning of my senior year. Oh, is it is it hard being an actor or like? Um, it's, it's difficult because there were a few questions being like, I want to be an actor. Like, how did he do it? Yeah, it's, um, I, I would definitely say it's hard to get into acting. I'd say like that in itself is probably one of the hardest things. And then yeah. also going on auditions over and over and over again and getting no, I think it's, I think it's Johnny Depp who says this quote. I don't know exactly who it is. It could be Denzel or some amazing actor, you know? Yeah. says you're gonna hear 10,000 no's before you hear one yes and that is so true you really have to develop thick skin as an actor because you get so close to a role you think this role is perfect for you it's so amazing and then you don't get it you know right. but then another one comes in the next day you can't really let it affect you you have to keep working on your craft keep yeah. you know pursuing the next role and um i don't know i i've been doing it i've been blessed enough to you know, have work for a decent amount of time. And, yeah. Um, I love it. You know, it's, it's really, really fun. I get to be creative every day I'm on work and it doesn't necessarily feel like work yeah. every day. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's really fun. It is, it is hard. You know, you do have to put in a lot of hours and make a lot of sacrifices, but you know, it is a pretty lucrative business. You get to, you know, sure, travel yeah. and go to Atlanta. I get to, you know, share a bathroom with Ralph Macchio. Like it doesn't really get better than that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so when you were in Atlanta, in, in Atlanta, you, you and Shola are hanging out the whole time, right? Like you guys room together. Yeah. We live together when we film out there. Cool. Me, him and Joe, Joe, so who plays Kyler. We all, Oh, nice dude. I love him. Yeah. 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 No, he is, he is, he is the total opposite of his character. He's like the sweetest guy ever. He's out when he lives with us. He's, I always cook it. He's the best cook too. Oh my oh, god! Really? I've learned so many recipes from him. He always cooks really bomb Korean food. Dude, he is the best at playing the douche. Oh, so at the, good at the cocky douche, man. He is yeah. so good. I love his. Every time he hops in, I'm just like, dude, this is gonna be a dope scene. Oh yeah, no, he he's so great. He has my favorite line, I think, in the entire series. The, the shit of, in my mouth. Yeah, he's like, if I don't get an A, go shit in my mouth. Like, that's yeah. one of my favorite lines. Who wrote that? John? Uh, I want to say it was um, Joe Pirelli, who's one of our writers. I think okay. it was Joe. Okay. I think it was Joe who wrote it. Um, when you got revenge on your bully, Brooks, that was, I don't know if I should say this, but that was one of my favorite scenes. That is just, my favorite scene. Okay, cool. I got to okay. say yeah, because, yeah, anyways, are we ever going to see him again? Like, are we ever going to see Bo again? <laughs> I, keep making, <laughs> I keep making jokes with John Josh and Hayden. I'm like, guys, come on. Like, can we just, like, be at a party or something? He just, like, wheel is in a wheelchair in the background. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, with yeah. the eye patch on It's all or busted up and shit. So when yeah, you I don't know. Him, I think yeah. that would be really funny if it's, like, you know, just a little quick line of like Kyler being like oh yeah I just came back from Brooks's grave like da, da, da. It was like a throwaway line I don't know I just think something like that would be kind of funny but, yeah they got a throw I mean what the hell happened to him he just like disappeared he's not at school it's not anything you know yeah I know he's like nowhere to be found like, peaced out um when you were shooting that scene what were you actually hitting you were just hitting like a they were just had the camera like at your face and yeah so the camera was on the ground pointed yeah. up and then they built this wooden platform that I was on top of and then they had a little tiny like one inch mat like one inch thick mat yeah. with a paper plate that uh had a little bit of fake blood on it and they said every third punch hit the bloody paper plate okay. so i would at the beginning i was punching punching pun punching and then they're like hit the plate hit the plate so then i started hitting the plate so then when you'd see my hand come back up you'd see a bunch of blood on it yeah yeah, yeah. and then i go back in you see blood flying off my hand and um that was one of my favorite scenes just because when I when I get up and I 
spit on him. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Scripted. And I don't know why. Just that like, wasn't scripted. No, yeah. In the moment, I was like, <laughs> I just felt, I just felt like I needed to spit on him. I was like, yeah. I remember walking off, and they weren't really framed for it. And I remember yeah. walking off, and I could, I could, I look to my left, and I see John at the monitors, and he's like, oh! like holding his shirt. <laughs> he was like so giddy. He loved it. He was like, hey, like. I know that was really a crazy emotional scene. Like, could you do it one more time and we'll frame for the spit? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Sounds good. That's dope, dude. Yeah, that spit yeah. was like the final, the chef's kiss on the, yeah. on the pizza there. I remember uh, Hito Koda, our stunt coordinator, yeah. he was sitting right next to the camera because he was there, obviously. I'm punching a little inch mat, but, you know, it's wood underneath. So he was like, yeah, let me punch like these first two knuckles. Like, don't hit here. You're going to break your hand. So he was always there making sure I was okay watching what I was doing. Right. And I remember he was recording and when I walked off, he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like, he's a hard guy to impress. If he thinks something's badass, like that man is a definition of badass. So yeah. if you think something's badass, I know I'm doing something right. Yeah, no, I've been watching some of your guys uh, behind the scenes and stuff. And it, it, the stunt guys are pretty damn amazing. You know, everyone who's been yeah. teaching you guys all the martial arts. Do you have any previous uh, experience with martial arts? Because, I mean, your your hitting is very – and this is one of the things in the comments, too. Your hitting is very fluid. Uh, uh, you just look like you have experience doing this stuff. Yeah, you know, um, I had a little bit. I had maybe like a year or two of karate in a strip mall. And okay. Like most elementary school kids, you know, get some sort of exposure like that. Yeah. Uh, but, I, I mean, I didn't help at all when we started filming. But when we – before we started filming, we would go train um, – with this uh, karate master, his name is Simon Ree. He's from Best of the Best. I don't know if you know that movie. Very legendary karate movie. Oh, He's man. the man. Um, before we would go out to Atlanta in LA, he would train us every year yeah. um, to sort of get us ready. And then when we were out there, uh, Hito Koto and Janelle Kerfman, who are some coordinators, and you know John Jihangir and uh, Ken Barefield, all those guys would they would train us a lot and get us into shape and. Yeah. Um, I mean, pretty much, I don't think anyone had a real background as, like, I'm talking about any, like, the kids. Yeah. Um, none of us really had a background. And they pretty much taught us everything. So the growth from season one to now, I attribute that all to the stunt team. Yeah, I was looking at at Mary's fighting from season one to season four. And, like, not not that she was bad or anything in season one, but, like, Very the different. level of, yeah, yeah, dude, like, like just her overall technique and the way she moves and her confidence you can just kind of see it on screen so yeah. she's she's done is she fun to work with yeah no she's awesome yeah. and i think speaking to that is also because a lot of times you know when you do fight scenes they'll uh do a stunt pass so they'll have your stunt double go in and i think when you notice like specifically one of the actors is getting better is you start to see less and less of their stunt double you know and you start to see more and more of right um Man. the actual actor doing all of that all of those fights you know so yeah. i remember in season one um some of the shots that are in there i mean for everybody but i know myself included i can really tell are my stunt double and then in yeah. season, when season two happened i really made it a goal that i didn't want my double to come in at all i wanted yeah. to do absolutely everything yeah. um so i know in season two like the only thing i don't do is like drop from the tree um there's okay. a technical role i didn't do when i'm fighting sholo and then i they hito would not let me get thrown through the glass trophy case i begged and begged and begged but they would not let me that wasn't I you i was gonna get a cut on my face that looked like you man though so they did a no really it good did job like that. yeah it's great like and i chris is my son double he's yeah. um, he's amazing right that, that dude is can take a freaking hit uh but you know yeah like it cut together really really well yeah, they did a good job with that one. When Dimitri kicked you in the, <laughs> in the freaking I know. Pool. I remember when I read that, I was like, this would never happen. Hawk would never lose. I'm so yeah. committed when it comes to that stuff. I, like, I know, dude. I, I saw that, and I was just like, okay. I don't know if that really <laughs> happened, but all right, whatever. Yeah, yeah. for the story. <laughs> um, if they ever finish Cobra Kai, I want to see a uh, spinoff of the Binary Bros. Oh, what happens dude, me too. Guys. That would be fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Gianni would be super down. He's, oh, yeah. Like he's also he's always over at our house uh, when because he usually uh, lives with his his mom will come out when um, we're filming because you know he's nice. a mama's boy he doesn't like to yeah. be away from the house very much <laughs> he gets nervous he probably um, gets no, the best food yeah I don't say yeah we he comes over because you know Joe's cooking and okay, everybody right, knows yeah, yeah. that right that's why Peyton comes over too she's like oh where's all the food you know what's she like to work with you guys have been hanging out for a while 
She's lame. Um, no, 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 she's really diva. Funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, total diva. Uh, yeah, she like if you're sitting in her cast chair, she'll punch you in the face and say, "Get out of my chair. It's my spot." You know. Um, she only likes the blue M and M. She's crazy. No, oh, she's no. really fun. Um, yeah, I, I'd say like she is able to just. Like, cause she came in in season two and everyone had known each other. She was able to come in and just instantly get along with everybody. Um, she's a very personal person or personable person. And she's just funny. She's just really fun to hang out with. Nice. So one of the yeah. new people that you got to meet was, um, Thomas Ian Griffith. Oh yeah. What was that like? Um, so we're, we're diving into this, the silver, uh, yeah, the silver stuff. yeah, he is. Okay. So this is how I met him. I had not met him yet. The first time I ever interacted with him was during a rehearsal for the scene that he walks into the Miyagi backyard for the first time. Yeah, and yeah. Daniel sees him and Johnny's like, who the hell is this guy? And all the kids right. are like, you know, peeking behind the thing. Like, what the hell is happening? And he walks in. He kind of had that crazy look and he walked up. And I I did not know he was that tall. This dude is like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, yeah. six. Like yeah, yeah. Martin Cove is 6'2", and yeah. he makes Martin Cove look small. Yeah. And I remember being so intimidated by him. And then I met him, and he was the nicest guy ever, you know? And yeah. he is also, like Billy, a freaking karate master and can absolutely kick the shit out of me. Um, but, yeah, I remember meeting him, being just so intimidated by him. But he is a – and he's a, a – when he's on set, he really brings his silver presence to every scene that he's in, even, yeah. like – when we're not rolling, he very much likes to stay in that space. And, um, especially for longer scenes in, in season five, there's some like more, there's some longer, you know, more, uh, serious scenes that he absolutely kills. And even season four, you know, um, but he, yeah, he's a yeah. phenomenal actor and really, really fun to watch. I'd say. Yeah. He was my favorite character in uh, karate kid. Did you, uh, do you, were you like a huge fan of karate kid before you got the Cobra Kai role? Yeah. So, when I was, I want to say like 12 or 13, my yeah. dad was like, all right, here's a list of movies you got to watch before you become a man. Yeah. And the Karate Kid movies were among, <laughs> you know, it was like Reservoir Dogs and, you know, a bunch yeah, of stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. But the Karate Kid movies were um, in that list. So, uh, yeah, I, cool. I was very familiar with the movies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was funny because – uh, all the movies that they reference in the show, like I know, well, and you know, I yeah. give Sholo a lot of shit for never seeing the Karate Kid before he had booked the role. And I'm like, dude, you're like the next Ralph Macchio, and you haven't even freaking seen the movie. Yeah, literally. Yeah, I, that's one thing I loved yeah. about how they did the uh, the storylines. They like switched everyone around, kind of like Sholo's kind of like the Ralph and, and Billy's training Ralph Macchio sort of, and like it's just yeah. switch kind of. And Robbie's like Johnny, and like it was pretty cool how they did that. Yeah. No, it is cool. And then I feel like it keeps kind of flipping around, you know, Miguel had a yeah. little, little dark moment for a little bit. And, you know, I think at the end of season yeah. one, he was going a little dark. And then season two, it looked like Robbie was going to start becoming the real good guy. And it just, it just keeps flipping. That's one thing I really like about the show is every character is a gray area. I'd say maybe besides Silver, besides Crease, like no one is just bad or just good, you know, yeah. like there's motives behind everything you for the most part get to see why each character does what they do you know yeah yeah that's what i was telling the the, the big two i guess because I, I didn't get to talk to josh um oh yeah josh, just, yeah that guy's real skirmishy he's uh he's a deep of that one <laughs> yeah he didn't show up um oh, no yeah mean? one of the things no nah, he's busy man um <laughs> one of the things one of the things they did that i really enjoyed was how like the first season was all about like kind of the OGs and like they incorporate some of the new kids in there. Mm -hmm. And then now it's just like, everyone's got these different storylines, but they still keep it so intact with the original characters mm -hmm. and embellish like, let's say like Hawk's story, but also it like it, it embellishes Daniel's story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, it's not like they're taking like one character and then like losing the other and they keep just expanding. Yeah. And I've never really seen that done before so well. They're, I think he's, dude, they're so smart how they give a character an arc, but it elevates other characters. Yeah. You know, and um, Yuji is the freaking man. I can't wait for people to see him in season five. Dear God, it is so cool. I have a lot of theories, and I can't wait for it. Um, I, well, I'm curious. I'm, I will, I can't confirm or deny anything, but I'm really curious what your theory is. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here, I think 
now that okay now i think that yuji is going to be opening his own dojo kind of thing and since you know daniel can't train or teach anybody yeah and and like johnny's off in south america i don't know if johnny's going to be there the whole season but we'll see i think everyone's kind of scattered i think eventually yuji's gonna have to fight silver Okay. And I think that's going to be badass because I think Silver is going to try to shut it down because he sees that, hey, Daniel can't be training students. Yeah. And then I think Stingray is eventually going to spill the beans on what happened oh. and that uh, Kreese wasn't the one who beat him up. And then I think Tori, who saw um, that Silver was bribing the ref, is probably also going to go to like Stingray or, or go to uh, Sam's mom mm-hmm. and maybe tell her what was happening there. And then eventually we're going to get a team up with Crease and Daniel. And then Johnny's going to come together. And then those three are going to team up and they're going to go against Silver. And then Silver's going to bring in Mike Barnes. And we're bringing some other people. So I feel like this is going to be pretty badass if that could happen. Otherwise, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows, That's so dude? cool. Oh, man. I want you to see season five right now. Oh, my God. Well, maybe next year you can have some time. You can come on and we can chat again about it. And no, yeah, that'd be cool. See if that cool. theory I, yeah. was legit. But um, I won't take any of your time, man. You, you were so generous. Thank you so much. Oh, no, yeah, man. Um, Thank you so much. This was a I, blast. I appreciate next it, season. dude. Yeah, next next season return. And uh, everyone who wants to go and find Jacob and Sholo's uh, podcast, I'm going to link it down below in the description. And I'll also pop it up on the screen. And you guys can go and check out their episodes. So, yeah, check uh, it yeah. out. Thank you.